As traders, we all know at this stage that there is no holy grail to trading. All we can do is try to spot a trend and attempt to exploit it. Something you can use to do this is to employ moving averages. And you have a variety of ones to choose from. You've got your simple moving average, your exponential, and your weighted. The simple one, as it would seem, is a very basic mean, where you would take perhaps the last closing prices of the last 10 days, divide it by 10, and that would give you your 10-day simple moving average. The weighted and exponential averages give a little bit more weight to the more recent prices. You can see the formula beside me. One thing to remember as well is that these are lagging indicators and oftentimes they will more than likely lag the actual price. In a sideways trend, they will not give any clear direction. You will find that the price action will whipsaw in and around them and give you no clear direction and will ultimately not be very helpful in your trade. The big and granddaddy of them all is the 200 day moving average and this is the one that will be looked at by the likes of hedge funds and institutional traders. For the most part, if an instrument is trading above it, it will be deemed bullish, while below it, it could be deemed anemic. And these moving averages can give you good opportunities for trading. They also give you an area where you might put your stop loss. So for example, if you find that the price is going towards, from below, the 200 day moving average, you might be inclined to think that it would meet resistance at that level. So you might place a short trade at the 200 day moving average, putting your stop loss that little bit above it, adhering to your capital and your risk reward measures. Below that, perhaps, if it actually rises above it, that can ultimately mean it's a good supportive zone and you might be inclined to take a long position on this newly bullish stock. As I've stated before, it can often be very useful to use a couple of moving averages where you can use the crossovers of perhaps the 50 and the 200 day moving average as a signal for placing a trade. So when you get the 50 day moving average rising from beneath the 200 day moving average, that is called a golden cross and it can often predicate a move higher in the market. Conversely, if the 50 day moving average crosses from above through to down through the 200 day moving average, that's known as a death cross and it can often mean that the price is going to go that bit lower as a lot of investors will be watching these two moving averages. So in some ways it's actually self-fulfilling. Using them in conjunction with some of the other indicators such as the RSI, support resistance and trend lines can really help your trading and while not all trades will be successful, it can give you a better edge on the market. So this is a copper chart we have here which represents one year of trading where every candlestick here represents one day of trading. And you can see that my blue line here is the 200 day moving average and it's a simple one that I'm using in this instance. In the more recent past, you can see that the price action made an attempt to go up as far as the 200 day moving average, but was met with resistance, where we saw a little bit of selling at around that particular point. You can also see is that the, the moving averages do not predict price direction, but rather reflect current direction. So when you hear that expression, the trend is your friend, technically it means is that if the price is over the last 200 days, it's indicating an upward trend. If it's below, then it's indicating a downward trend. So this would be an indication to me that the trend is down and it would give us an opportunity to sell. The other thing you'll look for when it comes to trading with the 200 day moving average, certainly to ascertain the overall trend, is where is the price in relation to the moving average? Is it below, is it above, or is it touching it? And the slope of the moving average is also important. If it's turned up, it can imply that there is a little bit of an upward momentum due, but it may actually falter at this particular point. Looking at the crossovers then, you can see I have a 55 day moving average on this, and every time it crosses over, it tends to give us a bearish signal. Similarly, when we saw a crossover here, we saw a little bit of a pop higher for the copper prices. Using the longer term moving averages tends to give you a later entry into a trade, but ultimately it can give you a more successful trade overall. It is possible to use shorter term moving averages, which will give you a quicker access, but it's also very important to remember, as I've said, that you should not use them in a sideways trending market because it will be subject to false signals and will ultimately not work very well for you. This is a daily chart, so we can move on to an hourly chart, and I'm using the FTSE 100 in this instance. So you can see, once again, I have the 200 p 
period moving average, which has represents the last 200 hours of trading. And again, you can see that the market tested this particular level and has fallen back off it. So now this resistance level appears to be holding. If we saw a break up through that, that could indicate quite a bullish move for this particular instrument. And we would be inclined to take a long position using the 200 period moving average as a support zone if it's breached and putting our stop loss below that. You can see as well that using these different moving averages here, I have the 21, the 55, the 100 and the 200. I use the 21 and the 55 period moving average because they're Fibonacci numbers and they tend to be quite good when it comes to ascertaining the train trend in the FTSE 100. But you can see the 21 period is quite aggressive and volatile and it tends not to be as smooth as say the 55 period moving average which is the blue line here. Nonetheless, you can see that the 21 period crossed over both the 100 and the 55 period moving average at this particular juncture. And since then, we've seen quite a significant fall down in the FTSE 100, where it fell from about 5,680 down as far as 5,610. So had we used this as a way of getting into a trade, this would have been quite a successful trade. And you can see that the 21 period moving average is just starting to cross over, which defines again how it's indicating where the market has been and it not necessarily where the market is going. What it does is give you a confirmation that this trend may be about to change. And of course, you can see that in advance. So we can see that they're touching at the moment, which may indicate a certain amount of a pullback, which as we can see here, has been met by resistance by the 200 period moving average. So in a nutshell, they're very useful in terms of crossovers to give you an actual entry point for a trade, both from the crossover to the downside and the crossover to the upside. And of course, the slope can be quite important. And again, if it's pointing upwards, it can indicate a slight correction in this particular instance.